श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम मोक्षगीता Swami Shivananda ji has composed it for all of us. Gita means the song. Except in Hindi movies, whenever you are happy, you sing. In Hindi movies, when you are miserable, you sing. Like Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavata Gita, that which was sung by Bhagavan. So, Moksha Gita. So, what is the theme here? All those who are struggling for liberation, they will never get liberation. It's not a curse, it's a truth. Forget about liberation. Then, we have to understand the meaning of moksha. Moksha, this word has two word, two alphabets together. Mo and ksha, moksha. Like asi, moksha. Mo means moha. Moha means wrong notions. Kshaya means kshaya, destruction. So what we will be trying to understand that we are all suffering because of wrong notions in our life. Wrong notions, I am very beautiful. Wrong notion, I am very intelligent. Wrong notion, I am very good. People don't appreciate me actually. Okay? So, these wrong notions are to be removed. So be attentive. Wrong notions are removed without replacing by new notions. This is most important thing we have to understand. Normally what happens, we are only replacing the wrong notions. Earlier I was a indulgent person, but since I have come on the line of yoga, they call it line, all kinds of questions come to us. One person asked me this question, Swamiji, please don't mind, I got a question for you. I didn't reply, but he asked the question. Uh, when did you come on this line, spiritual path? When did you come on this line? I said, when line marna chhod diya. 
ability if it ends. So, all other paths, they are replacing the notions. So, I was lazy, now I am crazy. Earlier I used to see movies, now I see the serials. Earlier I used to go to the um, bar, now I do it at home. Wrong notions are replaced by new notions. No. Normally what is understood spiritual life is, I want liberation. What we are going to understand and try to practice is liberation from I, not liberation for I. The problem is this I. When there is no I, there is no problem. Like in deep sleep, when we are snoring away, we have no problem. Others have, because they have got I. So what they should do? They should also sleep. And in that deep sleep, we have nothing. And yet, we continue to exist. Therefore, that which is present in the absence of everything is the truth. In other words, that which gives existence even to the absence is the truth. And this moha, wrong notions, we have to get rid of. Now there are four wrong notions, four, five of them. One wrong notion is about ourselves. Second wrong notion is about the world. Third wrong notion is about the spiritual practice. Fourth wrong notion is about God. Fifth wrong notion is about the soul or the jiva. Sixth wrong notion is when will I attain realization? How much time it takes to get realized? Millions and millions of years. Oh God. Get rid of all these wrong notions. For that we will be studying Moksha Gita. So Moksha is freedom from wrong notions in English translation. Now so far we have done uh, six chapters. So each chapter name I will tell you and one liners or two liners to indicate what is said. First chapter was search for the truth. We are all seeking something. But we don't know what we are seeking. Andhe naiva niya mana yathanda. And in that seeking, we do meditation. That is the fashion. Meditation. And what is the meditation? In a dark room, with the closed eyes, on the Amavasya night, sitting quiet and trying to search for a black rat which doesn't exist there by a blind person. Meditation. Don't search. Discover. There is no scientific searching. No. Scientific discovery. Discovery means what? What is already existing, but it is covered by something. We have to remove that cover and the truth is revealed. Therefore, it is not an act of doing something, but it is a process of undoing. It is not an achievement of becoming extraordinary, but dropping all the extra and coming back to ordinary. See, friends, that is moksha. So, this is the search for the truth. In the second chapter we studied was, what is the nature of Brahman? See, there are few words. In Vedanta Shastra, what is called as Brahman 
is called as Paramatma in Yoga Shastra and is called as Bhagavan in Bhakti Shastra. So, words are different but meaning is the same. When <coughs> Vedanta talks about Brahman, means Nirgun Nirakar, attributeless, formless. When Yoga Shastra talks about Paramatma with attributes but no form, and when the devotees talk about Bhagavan with attributes and with form. So these are the three exhaustive expressions of the divine for different qualities of people or the seekers. Nirgun Nirakar, Saguna Nirakar and Saguna Sakar. All of them are one and the same. See? Therefore, <clears throat> What is the nature of the Brahman? Essentially, without attributes, without form. This is what is Brahman. Now, Paramatma with attributes but without any form attributes supporting the vision when the eyes are open when the eyes are closed vision doesn't die but it is suspended for some time so these are the qualities whether functioning of the sense organs or digestion or supporting the structures, all the attributes, but without form. Like electricity supports so many gadgets, but no form. So when we look at electricity with reference to its manifestation, we will call electricity as Paramatma. And then the third is, the Saguna Sakar. Saguna Sakar is with attributes and with form. <clears throat> so our Bhagwan Krishna, Bhagwan Ram, Anumanji, you and me. Thank you very much. Nobody calls us like that. In this manner, <clears throat> the truth has to be exhaustively recognized. So three things. Nirgun Nirakar. Saguna Nirakar and Saguna Sakar. When these three things are distinctly clear, then only we have the right understanding about the truth. Now then we come to the third. How come this one reality has become many? So the topic introduces because of the Maya. Like, like Brahman is called by three different words, Similarly, Maya is also called by different words. Vedanta calls it Maya. Then <clears throat> the Yoga calls it Shakti. And devotees call it Kripa. Not you. <laughs> you started feeling. <laughs> These words are different. Meaning is the same. So what is Maya? Maya is <clears throat> one becomes many because of some attributes. Like vision is one but it has become many colors and forms. Maya. Second step. We become obsessed like somebody asked me this question, Swamiji, have you seen God? So what is behind this question? God is an object of knowledge to be seen with eyes because God has colors and forms. See? So every question tells us where is our standing. From there the questions come. <clears throat> Therefore, that obsession Whatever I experience through 
my sense organs whatever i experience through my mind whatever i can conceive through my intellectual capacity that alone is the truth if it is beyond that it is not the truth see this is the operation of maya now another operation one appears to have become many because of some conditionings and those conditioned expressions are taken as real that is maya so one man becomes the son husband and father so out of one man three arrows have come out son husband and father now who is miserable these three son is miserable because of the hitler father the husband is miserable by default and the father is miserable because of the monster son and where are these three nowhere this is maya that which doesn't exist and yet it troubles us this is the nature of maya another way of explaining is like the fire has burning ability dahika shakti now this burning ability of the fire burns everything except the fire and it is expressed in two ways when this burning power is unmanifest the fire supports the forms when the burning power manifest the forms are consumed isn't it funny this ability is called as the maya shakti so what is the nature of the maya therefore it is and it is not when it is manifest it is when unmanifest it is not and therefore maya is to be clearly understood in simple words conditioned expression of the infinite and taking that conditioned expressions as real is maya so if you are miserable because of any relations or possessions or anything you are under the influence of maya therefore this is the nature of maya and next one is what is the nature of avidya maya at the individual level is called as avidya avidya or ignorance means incompleteness in knowledge knowledge can never be absent knowledge is always present sat ischit it cannot be absent therefore avidya is the limited knowledge so what is the limited knowledge in some place there was a function and a person like this girl introduce here the topic he also introduce um the uh, the speaker me and he started talking all kinds of things quoting left and right not knowing anything about anything and in that he quoted one verse मन एव मनुष्याण कारण बंद मोक्ष भगवदगीता टोल्ड स्वामीजी टॉट मी नौ दैट राक्षस आई है नेवर सीन इन माय लाइफ एन ई स्टार्ट टेलिंग ऑल दैट देयर आफ्टर वेन दस एवरीथिंग वाज ओवर सो आई टोल्ड हिम एस एन हे हु टोल्ड यू दैट दिस वर्स इज फ्रॉम भगवदगीता it is not in bhagavad gita you know i thought every shloki is in bhagavad gita only <laughs> so he is the height of ignorance he is the authority of knowledge see avidya is incompleteness in knowledge that creates problem therefore when because of incompleteness there is agitation those agitations are called as desire okay? 
Tell me why young, educated, very well placed, free, healthy, smart boy, why should he think about getting married? Sense of incompleteness. What a life without a wife. After marriage, you know better than me. <laughs> See, the sense of incompleteness creates disturbances in the mind. That disturbance is called a desire. And whenever we are under the influence of the desire, we are bound to act. So, avidya kama karma. These three things put together is avidya. Then comes the nature of the universe. What is this universe? Universe has to be understood two ways. See? One way is that which appears under certain conditions only and if those conditions are not fulfilled, then it is an illusion. See? Like mirage waters, we see under certain conditions. We cannot see any time. See, I was coming, it was getting dark, but you know, on the way I saw mirage waters. You cannot. Therefore, under particular condition, only mirage waters appear. And once we know it is an illusion, we will not think about filling the bottle and showing to somebody, see, this is mirage water. No. Because it appears, doesn't exist. Now, our waking experience. Tonight when you will sleep, deep sleep, that time this ashram, this retreat, your achievement and failure, nothing enters. Where it has gone? So this world comes into existence only after body identification. If there is no body identification, the world doesn't exist. Like for a person in coma, he never suffers. Those who have to pay the bills, they suffer. Varta bhi nahi. He is enjoying. Pade hai. Kya farak padta hai. But the moment he gets identified with the body, the world is created. So what is this world? World is an appearance which in fact doesn't exist. This is one way of looking at the world. But then the effect of this will be what? When we recognize something as an illusion, what is the effect of that? For example, the uh, rainbow appears but doesn't exist. So, do we like to improve the rainbow? See, the same color we pure. Can't they change a little bit design? No. Second thing, do we like to take a piece of rainbow and give it to the uh, Valentine? No. Because and third thing, do we want to improve the rainbow? No. Why? Because we have recognized that rainbow is an appearance, doesn't exist. Whenever we have recognized this world in this light, first of all, we will not desire, we will not struggle to improve, we will not be feeling gain and loss. And the most important thing is we will not get influenced by anything. We don't have to do anything. Only recognize this. I am seeing the red color, the blue color, the black color, the yellow color. What I have to do that my vision should not be influenced by any color and form? Nothing. That is our essential nature. We are not influenced by anything. See, 
see my friends only recognize this pratyabhidnyayate bhagwan shankaracharya writes pratyabhidnya is recognition of your own being so what is the nature of this universe it appears but doesn't exist one way so no desire second way you alone have become everything see colors and forms are nothing but expression of the vision vision is unmanifest colors and forms colors and forms are manifest vision for a blind person colors and forms have no existence therefore he is not influenced by them similarly mind is unmanifest sense organs sense organs may be five and organs have can five ten of them but the mind is one mind is not influenced because mind alone has become sense organs electricity alone has become light therefore light cannot influence the electricity the more we become aware of this that i am alone expanded everything i am the kidney i am the digestive power i am the brain i am everything therefore do we have that thing you know i the kidney no which includes everything and excludes nothing is the truth and therefore we do not have desire about self we desire about the not self only this is the nature of the mind then what is the nature uh, now the nature of the mind it was the universe now what is the nature of the mind be very attentive mana buddhi chitta ahankar four of them mind intellect memory and ahankar these are four stages of the thoughts again i am repeating mana buddhi chitta ahankar they are not structural entities see like the our sense organs if you take eyes eyes have got structural eye and functional eye once in the south africa durban after my talk was over in the temple there was one lady sitting right in the front and must be around uh, mid 40s or so very beautiful big eyes and listening after satsang was over i said you don't get up i'll come and give you prasad she said all of you coming i'll walk so when i went to her i said amma i take this thing so i gave it to her first one after everything was over her mother came and talked to me holding her kami ji she is my daughter and you have given her the fruits first thank you so much then started crying kami ji she is 40 to 45 something like that but she is blind beautiful eyes so much anybody will be attracted towards those eyes structural eyes perfect functional eyes zero so like the sense organs and organs of action have both structure and function antakaran mana buddhi chitta ahankar they are not structural entities they are only the functional differences take your example to understand son husband father brother are they structural differences when a son is born normal when he gets married two horns come no these are only functional similarly the antakaran as four uh, stages or qualities of thoughts when the thoughts are in a state of confusion and chaos that state of thought is called as mind when the state of the thought is 
in the decisive mode right or wrong is not a criteria decision taken so the decisive mode of the thought is called as the intellect the third is the memory mode i remember i don't remember that memory mode is called as the chitta and a question comes whose mind whose intellect whose chitta of course mine so the ownership aspect of the three is called as ahankar mana buddhi chitta ahankar now the question comes where are they what are they so like a cloth alone can have wrinkles if there are there is no cloth there can't be wrinkles see exactly the same way antakaran is the cloth and on that cloth there are four types of wrinkles those four types of wrinkles are called as antakaran chatushte so chatushte four antakaran there there also five so nanendriyas five karmendriyas five pancha prana five the objects are five shabda sparsha rupa rasagandh and then five elements are five this world is expansion of the five therefore it is called a prapancha everything is five 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 but normally vedantis talk about antakaran chatushte they forget about the antakaran plus chatushte it becomes five so this is the aspect of the mind so in general when we are talking mind is a common term used to indicate the inner instrument this is the meaning of the nature of the mind then now we come to the seventh chapter the seventh chapter is the process of sadhana now what is that process of sadhana we will try to understand Five, six. Okay, job boy. Seven. Now the seven chapter begins. Guru Uvacha Achadyate Yatha Vanni Vasmanam Cha. कृपाण कहा कोशे न रविर्मेग गर्भो गर्भ उलबेन हिरक मृदा तद्ब शब्द ब्रह्म मां सास्ति भी आवृत न हियर द टीचर इज नॉट टेलिंग व्हाट इज द सेल्फ दैट वी आर वेयर इट इज सो देर आर फ्यू एग्जांपल्स गिवन वी नीड नॉट गो इनटू टू मेनी डिटेल्स we had done it last time like the fire is covered by the ash or the um what do you call the iron is covered by the um, kosha the sheath the uh, sun is covered by the clouds in the same manner the truth is covered by the pancha koshas this is the first masa asti bhi avrutam then second thing yadan api yate bhasma tadagni sadhu drishyate yada bhrani nirasyante tada aditya prakashate now the same examples are for the explain when the ash is removed the fire is seen when the clouds go the sun is seen in this manner when the sheath is removed the um, the 
डैगर इज सीन इन द सेम मैनर तथा एव अज्ञान संवारे निरस्ते ब्रह्म रोधिनी ब्रह्म बोधे न स्वभाव ब्रह्म साक्षात कृतिर भवेद इन द सेम मैनर वेन अवर दिस फाइव कंच पंचकोशाज आर रिमूव्ड देन द ट्रूथ इज रिवील्ड नाउ दिस ऑल फोर श्लोकस टेल वन सिंपल प्रिंसिपल ट्रूथ इज नॉट क्रिएटेड इट इज नॉट गेन्ड देअर फोर अवर महामंत्र इज वॉट ना कुछ पाना ना कुछ खोना नथिंग टू गेन नथिंग टू लूज वाई नथिंग टू गेन एक एग्जाम्पल मैन कैन बिकम द हजबंड हजबंड कैन नेवर बिकम ए मैन द रीजन इज He is already husband. See? So if that husband who is miserable, if he has to realize that he is man, what he has to do? I am a man. I am a man. I am a man. I am a man. Kya kaha? Nee nee nee. I am a husband. I am a husband. Then what is to be done? Play the role of husband, but don't get. enrolled in that therefore our maha mantra is wherever you are whenever you are whatever you are be 100% if you are in front of your father keep quiet let him talk do what you have to do you can't improve the old fellows they will have some fixed ideas they are unable to match with the changes in life friends remember one principle of spiritual life we must have the ability to change according to the circumstances around us very important spiritual practice we were going by bus somewhere in himalayas somewhere the bus stop and there was one pillar not uh, pillar one tree and the tree was covered by some iron um, compound type of thing and we had to wait there so i was looking at it there was somebody sitting next to me so amit ji what are you looking i said i am getting realized what is that i said you see that tree yes now what you have understood He said, "Your questions are very funny." I said, "As you are, remember, learn, learn, learn from every experience of your life. No comment, learning. When you comment, you don't learn. When you learn, you don't comment. So, what is there to? I say, see, and explain me what is exactly that? Oh, it's a tree." and it was protected by some iron uh, rods but some of the rods have gone inside it then that's all i said i have seen something different i have learned something different you may be iron very strong as compared to that soft tree yet if you don't change you will be consumed change yourself as per the need of the time friends and we have all done it there wished to be one mahatma he is no more and he was very very much loving me whenever he used to come to mumbai i used to go and take his darshan very elderly mahatma and he used to always make the same statement in old days you forget about what you are talk earlier with the moment i go i'll do namaskar to him i sit down he will make no no sit with me first of all and he used to say in hindi if you want to listen geeta in english listen from me the only person who can talk geeta in english so people look at me every time the same thing 
and he was staunch against in english extremely he had not studied english because of hatred for english and his commentary notes on bhagavad gita he told me once he said uh, i want some help from you i said maharaj please order me he my gita um, notes translate them in english so that more people can listen then he said when we were young we had such a tremendous hatred for english because britishers were ruling us so we have taken a vow we will read anything except english see friends we have to change then only we can grow spiritually if we don't we will be erased like the iron rod which was consumed by the soft tree therefore we have to change our approach to the reality and what is the approach don't be obsessed with anything we are so much obsessed small little things adjust adapt then only we will not be troubled by all the things what we are carrying away from the so many generations hold on to the principle and continue to live in uh, us probably this happened my talk was over and then we were in a dining hall and one gentleman from karnataka bengaluru he came and there so many of indians mainly and um, he started talking to me in sanskrit and then uh, i replied him in english he said why do you talk in sanskrit i said i don't know how to talk but no 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 you are you understand everything you give lectures and i have heard you you know you know but why don't you talk in sanskrit i said look here are we gentlemen yes here anybody know sanskrit no so two of us will talk and what you want to prove what for it is spoken people should understand is it not see friends our expressions of the scripture should be such that the listener should feel come on it's very easy i can do it on the contrary if it is the other way around oh god sanskrit apne se nahi hota no see friends we may know we may not know but we should not be obsessed that is important otherwise we get lost in non essentials suppose somebody comes and tells you in english my dear i really love you english and somebody comes and tells me in sanskrit tum maha murkho si thank you spoon whether it is wooden plastic gold silver steel is secondary what is going in the mouth you have got a silver spoon and dhokla <laughs> and you have got the ordinary plastic spoon but a nice rasagulla um sampraapte sannihite kale nahi nahi rakshate dukrum karane language is only a means of communication of knowledge therefore let us not get obsess remove all these coverings therefore um तथा एव अज्ञान संवारे निरस्ते ब्रह्म रोदिनी देर फोर अवर रॉन्ग नोशन आर टू बी रिमूव बिकॉज ऑफ विच द ट्रूथ इज कवर्ड ब्रह्म रोदिनी ब्रह्म बोधेन स्वभाव स्व संभवाद स्व ब्रह्म साक्षात कृतिर्भवेद तो 
when we come to know brahma bodha now here another important word brahma jnana is knowledge where the operation of thoughts is involved what you are hearing is knowledge brahma jnana brahma bodha is experience which does not involve the operation of thoughts your being is it established because of the sense organs or the mind or the logic no according to tripura rasya this is asampradnyat nirvikalpa samadhi you are not sleeping you are seeing everything you are hearing everything yet you are untouched by anything like vision is untouched by all the colors and forms which are seen we are untouched by anything this is brahma bodh like space supports everything rejects nothing at the same time uninfluenced by anything and the best part is we don't have to do anything man that is our natural state when my eyes are seeing the picture of the statue of jesus has it become holy if it, uh, the eyes are seeing some dirty thing has it become unholy but what happens dekho suno bug bug karte raho we have to correct this approach in life no comments no nothing no evaluation no suggestion as a result mind will not be born out of consciousness like somebody is born when we are out of deep sleep when in deep sleep nobody is there therefore all happiness this is the waking sleep this is the brahma bodh therefore brahma bodhena our own being brahma sakshat krutir bhavet so this is the brahma bodh now if we are able to remain in this longer and longer time that will become our effortless being spontaneity is an expression of the divinity if our vision is normal we open our eyes instantaneously all colors and forms are seen no struggle no effort if our vision is normal meaning we don't have to become anything 
We don't have to gain anything. But what happens, you know, we get so much lost. I don't do the japa. See, I wanted to do japa, but you know, my mala is broken, you know, I don't know. I think it's the apshakun, you know. What is to be done? Yes, it's the mahapshakun. Then make a rudraksha mala done in gold. And um, thereafter, do puja, um, Shiva's puja. And after that, when everything is over, do the uh, Omna Shiva Japa there 108 times. Then, then that mala don't give to Panditji, give it to me. Ah. Therefore, Brahma Sakshat Kriti Bhavet. Sakshat Kriti means it is not created. It is without any medium. Dugdhena Navanitam Tvam Vyapakam Pariprashasi Tadeva Labhate Kintu Matite Payasi Swayam. Can we see the ghee in the milk? No. But then, uh, Tvam Vyapakam Na Pashasi Tadeva Labhase Kintu Matite Payasi, payasi Swayam. The same ghee is available to us if we have worked on it. So first of all, we heat the milk on a low flame and then we add uh, the starter at a particular temperature, leave it undisturbed overnight and then it becomes the yogurt. Y-O-G-H-U-R-T. What can I do? That is the spelling. Yogurt. <laughs> Do this twisting, that twisting, back in yoga. It becomes yoga And then you do mathanam, do the churning, and whatever the navanita comes, take it out and put it in a pot. These are the techniques. And after that, sufficient every day keep on doing it. After one week, sufficient quantity will be there. Then you start churning. See? And as you are churning slowly, the ghee, the butter will come out. Then you have to burn, I mean, boil it on low flame. Slowly, slowly, water will evaporate it and the ghee will come. So much? Yes. So, do yoga. And then do churning. We are... Heard, I don't know whether I did we study Kavali Upanishad here? No, long day. In Kavali Upanishad, there is a mantra Atmana Maranim Krutva Pradavam Chotara Aranim Dhyana Nirvatana Vyasat Pasham Dhati Panditaha. So, lower Om is the lower um, Mathani and upper one, and in between there is the rod. And Jnana Nirvathana Abhyasa, go on churning. So lower cup is I, the Jiva. The upper cup is Paramatma. And in between, the churning rod is your intellect. And then start inquiring, understanding. And as a result, the truth will be revealed to you. So, Lavate kint, um, lavase kintu matasi matite spayasi swayam tathana brahma shaknoshi sandrushtam charma chakshusha dhyane na drakshasi brahma sarva vyapitu asamshayam. In the same manner, the truth cannot be seen by the uh, naked eyes. In Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan says to Arjun, Bhagavan was more eager to show him Vishwarup darshan than Arjun himself. The moment Arjuna says, see, 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 all my, everything, and then Arjuna with eyes and him, oh, I can't see anything. Bhagavan says, with your charma chakshu, you cannot see. Dada ami, divya chakshu te. I give you the divine vision. And then he is able to see. The divine vision is knowledge which is beyond the limitations of means of knowledge.
be attentive. Sound. Or I'll say by mouth. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Sound. How many times? Three times. Why three times? Because in between there is silence. So we have heard both. Sound as well as silence. Otherwise it cannot be three. So who are we? The one who is illuminating the presence as well as absence of the sound is beyond sound, presence and absence. Therefore, the truth is beyond the scope of I know, I don't know. I gained, I don't gain. I want, I don't want. Cannot. All the language becomes important. That is the Divya Jaksha. And therefore, wise people live in this world such a simple way that nobody will even recognize them. See, friends, this is what is the Dhyanena Drakshasi Brahma Sarva Vyapitu Asamshayam. So we have to hear Dhyana doesn't mean meditation. Dhyana means live in awareness, not mechanically leading life. And how to live in awareness? This principle of friends try. Every experience is given to us by the Lord for us to learn. If we keep learning from every experience with every additional experience, we will grow wise. But instead of learning from the experiences, we react. And if we learn, like we all have learned in our childhood, that the fire burns. We have learned. Therefore, we have no hatred or liking for fire. On the contrary, we decide how to deal uh, with the fire which has got burning power. Not only that, we encash that burning power to our benefit because we have learned. If we learn from every experience of our life, we will grow wise. If we don't learn, we will grow old. And otherwise, old otherwise people are a global warming. Problem for everybody. See? It's not that they are bad. They are good. But they are not aware where we are required, where we are not required, whether we should get involved or not get involved, whether it is required or nothing. Because obsessed with some kind of old timers. Therefore, we must be able to fit ourselves in today's time. Then we are received everywhere. There was one Swamiji, he is a um, follower, asked me once, Swamiji, you go to China? I said, yes. What do you eat there? I said, I eat there a cockroach achar, very tasty. <laughs> do I go there to eat? I go there for satsang. So food is secondary. Oh, Swamiji, I say, I want to get my guru from uh, Himalayas. He stays in Himalayas. He said also that I want to come to Mumbai. I want to see that. Then why don't you bring in? No. What is the problem? Problem is, he wants to go for toilet outside. <laughs> you, have gone, you have got only disposable tissues. He wants a disposable toilet. Yet, gatwa nani vardante now what should I do? See how funny we are. And then we become a problem for everybody. We have to learn to adjust like water. Add sweet, it becomes sweet. Add sour, it becomes sour. 
let it be a petri dish comfortable let it be a test tube comfortable let it be a um, uh, very thin they are also comfortable no problem but we are like the ice cubes unless i get a square i don't fit so and just yourself and when we address ourselves we are fit everywhere and that is how parmatma is parmatma adjusts himself in the human being in the animal in the stones in the bricks he has no problem slowly this principle will go deep in our system and that is what is said here therefore um swiyam स्वीयमादेहि चित्तम च निरस्ता किल कलमशम अवसादय संबंधान मनसो बाह्य वस्तु भी अप टू हियर वी हैव सीन लास्ट टाइम नाउ फ्रॉम द सेवंथ वर्स ऑनवर्ड्स विल टेक अप इन ए डिटेल वे ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णात्पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम